guys welcome back to the channel we're gonna do a couple little different videos here if you've followed along we've done a lot of work getting the place up and going and some equipment videos and different things planting drilling baling hay but uh, now I want to talk a little bit about where the operations going how we got started so I got my dad here Ronnie and I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about that welcome guys we started out bringing into this land right here. It was overgrazed. It had been sprayed too much. The soil was dead. And uh, we had to bring life back to it. Well, we didn't really have the money to do it the way most people do. So we just started trying one thing after the other. We first ripped the ground for about three years. And then uh, we was able to get a no-till drill where we could start planting these cover crops to help build the soil. And because my goal in life was always been to raise cattle. And as a young man, I worked in the uh, stockyard. I uh, sorted cattle for sale. Cattle's always kind of been my passion, especially grazing cattle and feeding cattle. And now we're on our road to doing what I've had a long life dream of doing and we're trying to raise cattle on grass where we're not putting all the antibiotics in these cattle we're not feeding all that feed to finish these cattle I'm not against feed I think cattle need a little feed but you can graze these cattle on grass and then just add a little feed with it and I think it makes that meat just tender being able to taste the difference between store-bought meat and good raised homegrown beef so when we started this project back four years ago of coming to the point that we've now came to where now we have bought our own cattle uh, we're grazing five steers right now getting them finished up to be able to butcher and market the meat and this is where we're starting at we've got 10 heifers right now that we're getting ready to breed that's going to be the first starters of our herd and we're able to start raising these heifers with no antibiotics put in these cattle we're not going to have no pesticides if we can keep from it no worming because we've put in crops to help deworm these cattle but when you got healthy cattle you don't have to worry about parasites so we're starting out with no antibiotics no chemicals of any kind in these cattle no hormones we're strictly going to an all-natural beef cattle that is good for you meat that is high and the good things the nutrition that will have the right vitamins and minerals in them i'm a firm believer in high quality mineral for cattle for healthy cattle that that's what we need in our lives or in our food chain so this is our goal is to raise all natural good finished grass-fed beef so uh, let's talk a little bit about our selection and uh, what made you select the kind of cattle you did well one thing I have watched over the years been in this industry for about 40 years now I've seen that genetics play a big part you have to have cattle that will feed good and it takes genetics in that to do it you have to have cattle that are grazed a lot of cattle of today they have brought in the cattle are dependent on the farmer they have to have all the hay the feed they will not graze they're too lazy to graze they want everything brought to them and if you'll notice a lot in the summertime a lot of your black cattle that are running on fescue in the heat of the day they're standing in the pond or in the shade when they need to be grazing because grazing in the middle of the day is when the cattle gets the most nutrition out of that grass 
the grass, all your nutrition comes up in that grass in the middle of the day. And then when nighttime comes, about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the evening, all that goes back to the roots in the plants. So we're missing that nutrition in these cattle whenever them cattle are in the shade all day or in the ponds trying to cool off. I picked some red cattle. I've got a couple of black cattle. And I've got some smoked Charlet cross cattle. They'll be able to tolerate the heat, I think, a lot more than the black cattle will. And as we go on, we're going to build a herd and we're going to develop a cow that will graze, that will be heat tolerant, insect tolerant, and that will be ready to graze whenever we're open the gates to them to go on grass. They're not going to be wanting to shade trees. They're going to be wanting to eat grass. So uh, the selection of cows we made is dependent on a couple of those things. And here in Oklahoma, our average summers are anywhere from 92 to about 102 degrees and runs from pretty much end of June to late August. So we got uh, quite some time of hot temperatures and then usually in the winter time here it uh, starts cooling off towards the middle to end of October and uh, it'll stay pretty cool till usually the end of March. So we were able to have Oh, three planting seasons uh, here that work for us. We're able to plant in the springtime, early summer, and uh, late fall. And, you know, a little bit of our mixes uh, depend on the time of year. So we decided to do it with the fescue upon our land. Fescue, it's a very toxic plant to cattle, to horses, uh, to even birds and quail they eat the seed. It will kill baby quail when they eat the seeds of it. And then cattle, it works kind of like sugar diabetes in people. It restricts the blood flow in these cattle. And so what we've done, we've took and tried to kill out all of our fescue. And we've came back in with, uh, in the spring, we'll come in with oats. Uh, we'll use buckwheat. We'll have different clovers that we've planted to uh, bring these cattle through the spring when the fast growth. And then we're going to come in with Sudan grass, millet, uh, sunflowers, uh, a few other warm season crops that will sustain those cattle up through August and maybe even into September. And then we will have our fall crops coming in when they have already graze these warm season crops then these cool season crops will kick in in the fall and uh, we have put in cereal rye triticale uh, again oats oats grow good in the fall when it starts cooling off turnips uh, radishes uh, collard greens these are all brassicas that them cattle really enjoy eating and they're very high in protein and when you can take a cow and graze them on a 20% protein grass, we're looking at a lot more growth. We're looking at a better finish on these cattle. And, you know, we just think that this is the way that we should go. Well, we spent the last couple months getting our fall planting done for this year. And uh, we uh, have grown a little bit better than we have in the past couple years but this year we think we're going to have a pretty good uh, outcome for the cereal rye and stuff early uh, March late February but uh, we had quite a few setbacks the first couple years we started doing this like he was saying our soil wasn't that great and we had some problems with the drill if you watch a couple of my other videos I've done some work on them and kind of explain the issues but uh, overall we think our seed depth was a little too deep and we've made some adjustments on that and uh, hopefully uh, we can correct some of these issues. We've had uh, a lot of rain this past year and when I say a lot I mean way over the normal. Uh, if you've seen some of the, the flooding through the Midwest uh, last year we ended up and got 
quite a bit of flooding here uh, not on our place but the surrounding areas got tremendous amounts of rain in just a few days and that's kind of set us back a little bit as far as you know the growth of some of these crops some of the seeds may have gotten a little too wet to germinate and the ground's been so muddy so our planting dates weren't quite always on time because it'd rain and it'd get warm the ground would dry out and we'd get ready to plant and it'd rain again another two to three inches and it'd just be too wet to get out in the field so uh, we think the next year ongoing will be you know a better year to plant for us and another thing on all this wet ground one of the things that we found out was our crops they didn't die but whenever spring came the crops instead of growing foliage they stemmed and went to seed quick uh, the wheat around here did the same thing uh, all your cereal rye the triticale everything nothing really produced foliage for these cattle to eat and one of the big things that we found out was all this water had stripped the oxygen out of the soil and if you don't have oxygen in the soil then plants can't grow because they have to have that oxygen down in the soil in them roots to bring that foliage on and that was one of our big problems this year and we're hoping that this coming year we won't have quite a wet a season but if we do we're going to come back and hit it hard in the spring with some good crops that like moisture and uh, they're out there so you know we'll come back and we'll adapt ourselves to what's thrown at us in the way of the weather and the different things like that to uh, what comes our way as a cattle I mean if we have to graze bigger lots we'll graze bigger lots but if we have a good growing season we'll be able to graze smaller lots and we'll have a tremendous good year that's what we're believing for this year so most of this type of farming which is called uh, if you really research and look into it it's called uh, regenerative agriculture and there's different different methods of doing it some people do cover crops for after corn season or after beans or after their cash crops they'll come in and plant uh, in between the corn rows say they do like radishes or turnips and stuff like that but uh, we're not doing any uh, harvesting or anything like that we're strictly planting all ours for grazing and using the cattle uh, to graze the crops and and to uh, put green manure back on the topsoil to build that structure in that soil because if you got a good live soil you can grow just about anything you want to grow and that's our goal is to get our healthy soil uh, to make it rich in nutrients that we'll be able to grow and if we're able to grow these things then our cattle will just grow I mean you will be able to sit back and just watch the growth in them and guys this stuff isn't easy it, you're not just gonna go out there and just get stuff to work for you overnight we've learned that you know there's there's no answer direct answer to yeah this works you know it what may work for you may be different for us you know depending on which region you're in or and climate factors and all that kind of stuff and it it's been several years of pretty hard work to find something that it works for us and we still haven't found all the answers yet we're trying new stuff every day and writing down you know what worked and what didn't work and things we need to improve on and different stuff like that so usually how we're going on from here is we're really going to focus on the cattle aspect as far as getting our paddocks made after everything's grown and planted and really focusing on building our paddocks and pin size and really making those cattle eat the forage yes uh, we, we will sit there and determine how much foliage is in these each one of these paddocks and we'll determine our paddocks on how many cattle we have to put on each paddock and how much they can graze off that paddock by how much foliage is in it and the numbers and, that, and then we'll determine what size paddocks we put because we're wanting to get the maximum 
grazing out of each paddock of only taking between the first top third to half of each one of these paddocks and where it gives that grass it don't shock it but it will let that grass come back to maturity quicker when well, we can come back on that we're shooting at a deal about every 60 days being able to come back on each one of these paddocks and regraze them because they will have their growth back and the nutrition back in them but so many people they overgraze you know their paddocks that they'll stick them in there and they'll let them cattle they think as long as there's grass in there they need to be grazed off but when you graze them that grass down short it stresses that grass and that grass it takes months for that to come back and sometimes they do it too short that it'll be the next year for that grass to ever come out of it and he talked about stripping the grass down that's another thing we learned this year um, baling hay actually has been hurting our soil and we've heard some different guys you know talk about that We're like well yeah but you know we gotta have some hay through the winter and then we had the our local NRCS came out and they looked at our cover crops and thought they were doing pretty good but they did advise us that we need to stop baling hay off our fields that we're using for grazing and if we do want to bale any hay then we're gonna have to get to where we can bale it at no less than six inches off the ground because our standard traditional three-point disc mowers or whatever you guys call yours we call them just disc mowers here but they cut the grass to where it's like maybe two inches uh, off the ground and in the summertime the grass will get real real crunchy when you walk out there it didn't do it too bad this year because of all the rain we had but on a normal summer it really takes a lot out of the ground and and when you cut it that short it really pulls all the nutrients out of the ground to try to regrow that plant uh, for so it can sustain life so our goal is to maybe get some other acreage around that we can bale our hay off of or get a disc bind uh, roller crimper with some skid shoes on it that we can raise up and mow at a taller height and you know a lot of people think oh mm -hmm. that baling don't hurt you that much but it does it, it's really that's one of the things with this ground was before we took it over it was sprayed with chemicals every time a weed grew up in it they sprayed it and then they bailed everything off for hay and that was the reason our ground was so compacted so we're coming at it a different method now and I really believe that we're going to see major results this year in our pastures because our soil has darkened up it's come richer in the last just in the last year our soil has really changed colors so that means that the nutrients are starting to come back into our soil and we're putting in brassicas which really bring a lot of carbon out of the atmosphere and puts it in that soil and that's one of the main things that we're shooting for is to get this soil richer by using these brassicas and building that carbon in our soil so in the next video series we'll kind of take a look around the ranch here kind of go over you know some of the supplies uh, that we use as far as uh, our electric fence and posts and chargers and kind of how we move our cattle and the schedule we're going on and uh, how we get water to them and on the last thing I want to touch on is watering uh, before we go it's tough to get water set up we've had how we're doing it now we want to change from what we're doing we basically set our paddocks up and we got water down to about the top half of the field where we usually do all our grazing and we make just a single little lane so they can come up there and get water but we do believe in giving fresh water to our cattle and not letting them get in the pond because we don't want to pollute our pond with them pooping in there and stuff like that and we got one automatic water system uh, that's hooked up to our uh, pasture pond down here that is gravity fed with the float in it and it's like a, a concrete uh, trough and we got it going the other day and got it cleaned out so hopefully we can start utilizing that and then eventually 
we want to get some different water structure yeah, set up. Yeah, we're we're looking at setting up water in a center of these paddock or the center of these fields where we can build our paddocks coming into that water all the way around that pasture and each one of these pastures will have a water system right in the center and then our next goal is going to be able to uh, bring water in from ponds we're going to, we're looking at building a couple more ponds for water source for these cattle because we don't want to cattle in these ponds it makes the the feces and stuff it just puts bacteria into your cattle and it's been proven that fresh water you will get more production out of them cattle you know having fresh water for them and so even if we go to a pond uh, water we're going to hot water that pond off where only they can just stick their head in it to water uh, we did this a little bit last year and it really worked well where them cattle couldn't get into that fresh water but they still got the pond to drink in so we're looking at a couple of different options on it where we don't have to have city water that we're paying for but we'll use what we have on our place in ponds and uh, our ponds are clean that water's clear it's not muddy ponds so we're really looking forward to that and also we like to have a bunch of fish in our ponds because that way you know the, the catfish kind of keep it ate up and the bass in there and they keep the pond live as far as uh, movement in the water and everything else and you know we got a couple ponds that have a lot of fish in them and a couple that don't when you look at the water you can really tell it's a lot cleaner and clearer looking and when we say we want to build ponds we're not just going to go out there and just build a pond uh, our goal is to utilize every square inch of the land uh, for uh, production. So when we go out and look to build a pond, we want to build them in spots we know get a lot of water and spots that are like dips and stuff that's not real ideal for driving over with the drill or anything like that. We got a couple of those spots out there and that's where we want to build our ponds so we're not just wasting land good land to build a pond on but we're also using a spot in the field that you know it's kind of low and kind of stays muddy and nasty and that's where we want to build our ponds so that way every part of our operation on the whole place has a use and is in some way or fashion contributing to making money so we don't want to just have useless parts of the pasture or anything like that where it can't be planted or used for grazing or you know some type of income yeah and then we're also looking at a few other things uh we're going to put chickens next year behind these cattle that we're grazing because uh chickens are very important in this area the chickens will go behind these cattle they will scratch the manure pick out any larvas uh, chickens are one of the best uh, wormers you can get because when flies come in and they lay that larva in that manure those chickens will pick that larva out and the men that have been running these chickens behind these cattle very few flies are on their cattle uh, cattle are parasite free because uh, there's just there's just no parasites able to come through the ground and come up that grass for these cattle to eat because they're being picked off as soon as they make a larva stage from them chickens so we're going to incorporate chickens in there as our pesticide so uh, guys I hope you enjoyed this kind of explanation of how our ranch works and kind of the direction we're wanting to go and I'm going to start doing these little videos like this and uh, Next time we'll kind of, like I said, go over, you know, some of the stuff we use and some of the methods for moving cattle and uh, go out there and look at the hot wire and kind of the setup. So if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment. You know, we want to get people interested in doing this uh, method of agriculture versus the traditional way. Uh, we believe it's going to be very successful and I want you guys to come along on our journey of doing it. So anyways, I'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching.